Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. We're going to look at three reasons for the Bitcoin price having dump from $10,000 to $8,100. So it was a significant dump of about 10%. It happened on Sunday night just before the Bitcoin halving that happened on May 11th, 2020 in the late afternoon. And so we're going to try and take a look at that and understand it in a little deeper way. Also in today's video, we're going to talk about a move over stock market, breaking down Bitcoin's unusual correlation with Beyond Meat. We're going to take a look at the three reasons that we just talked about, and then we'll wrap it up with an article about uh, top crypto traders predict Bitcoin price direction after the BTC halvening. So we have some great information for you today. And this is information. Should I buy Bitcoin now or wait? And the information is going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? I have a challenge for you. Accept the challenge and smash that like button. It helps us a lot with the YouTube algorithms. They will promote the video if you say that you like it. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And as always with cryptocurrency, you want to understand the risk you're taking. Take a look at this disclaimer. It'll help you understand the risk involved with cryptocurrency. Now at this moment, Bitcoin, so this moment is 6.59 a.m. Central Standard Time, May 12th, 2020. And at this moment, Bitcoin is trading for $8,798. It's down of almost 2%. And the market dominance is 67.65%. So the dominance has been floating around this range. It's dropped up and dropped down a little bit. When this dominance goes up, that means Bitcoin is increasing faster than the rest of the market. And when this dominance goes down, it means that the rest of the market is gaining traction on Bitcoin. And so, uh, you know, that's always a good metric to kind of follow because when Bitcoin is, is moving or increasing in value faster than everything else, then you know that uh, Bitcoin at that moment in time is is a little bit of a better investment. Now, this is my opinion. It's not financial advice. And when this value is dropping, that means the rest of the cryptocurrency market is increasing faster than Bitcoin is increasing. So, move over stock market, breaking down Bitcoin's unusual correlation with Beyond Meat. Now, Beyond Meat is that vegetarian hamburger uh, that that uh, uh, Burger King has been uh, advertising so much. With Bitcoins having just one single day away, speculation points to a new bull market just ahead. However, in a bizarre correlation, BTCUSD has been tracking lockstep with the ebbs and flows of the per share price of Beyond Meat Incorporated. So I just thought this was really kind of fascinating. So here's the chart. This chart covers almost a full year and the red line is the price of Beyond Meat and the blue line is the price of Bitcoin. And you can kind of see how every time Bitcoin's going up and uh, Beyond Meat is going up right alongside of it with this one little exception right here. And Beyond Meat took a significant increase right here where Bitcoin took a little bit of a dip. But other than that, it's really kind of funny how the two of them, in terms of their price, have been tracking very, very closely. So why is that? The article didn't come to any strong conclusion, and neither do I. I think it's more of a coincidence, but almost kind of a funny coincidence, kind of interesting. So three reasons for the Bitcoin price having dump from $10,000 to $8,000. We'll take a look at it. So the 10,000 to 10,000, 10,200 to 10,500 is a multi-year strong resistance area for Bitcoin. That's their first reason. 
Since mid-2018, the 10,200 to 10,500 range has served as historically a strong area of resistance for the top-ranking cryptocurrency by market capitalization. After the first breakout above 10,500 in June 2019, which led to a swift run to 14,000, that's when Bitcoin hit 14,000 about a year ago, Bitcoin failed to move above that level five out of six times in the last two years. And so five out of six times that Bitcoin has hit this range in the 10,200 to 10,500, it failed to move higher. And so the, the first reason they're talking about is for whatever reason, this has become an area where a lot of people tend to sell their Bitcoin, which prevents the price from going much higher. People would just hold on to it instead. The price would undoubtedly continue to go up. But as whales started to sell at 9,900, it led to a cascade of long liquid, long contract liquidations, primarily on BitMEX and Binance Futures. In one hour, more than $200 million worth of longs were liquidated. That is a huge amount of people who just lost money because they were betting on futures contracts and leveraging their money. And because of that leverage situation, when they get to a place where uh, the amount of money that they've invested is not enough to cover the losses that they have because they're using leverage, all of a sudden those accounts get wiped out. And so uh, a bunch of people lost $200 million worth of money as a result of them trying to use leveraged money to make more money. So always, always very risky. I have a tendency, I just don't, I just don't do leverage trading because I'm not willing to take on the extra risk. And if you're doing leverage trading, I just want to encourage you to be very, very careful. So the next one was whales quickly moved to sell Bitcoin at the point of rejection. And so they saw that Bitcoin was starting to tank and a bunch of whales also started to sell, which made this worse as far as uh, people getting liquidated. Almost as soon as the rejection of 10,200 was confirmed, whales started to fiercely short Bitcoin across major cryptocurrency exchanges. The open interest on the big four derivatives exchanges that include Binance Futures, BitMEC, Derbit, Oki, uh, X plunged. The term open interest refers to the total amount of long and short contracts open at a particular time. So the rapid decline in open interest meant that as selling pressure began to build up, it caused over leveraged buyers in the futures market to get trapped in their positions. In other words, they got liquidated. Uh, in other words, many traders, especially whales, betting against Bitcoin at a critical reversal point of a long-term trend triggered a sharp drop in a short period of time. So leverage, so the, the whales going short on Bitcoin was another reason. And then the last is massive volatility ahead of the halvening. Ahead of the Bitcoin block reward happening set to occur on May 12th, trading activity on all major cryptocurrency platforms surged significantly. When many new investors enter the market in anticipation of a major event, it opens the market up to a steep sell-off. For instance, after the 2016 block reward happening, the Bitcoin price dropped by more than 30% as traders reacted with a sell the news response. A confluence of an overextended Bitcoin rally to 10,000 whales front-running retail investors with a sharp sell-off at 9,900 and high anticipation for the halving are triggering a near-term pullback prior to May 12th Bitcoin halving. So uh, those three reasons are interesting. Are they accurate? It's hard to say. They, it, you know, from reading it, it definitely appears that those all had an impact or, uh, you know, were part of the cause. But there may have been other factors involved in the price drop. Um, at this point, those were the best ones that I've heard of, um, and I'm sure that there's more out there. 
So top traders predict Bitcoin price direction after BTC halvening. So I'm not going to read the entire article as I normally do. I am going to put links to all of these articles in the YouTube description. So if you navigate to the, this video on YouTube, you should be able to do it by hitting uh, uh, an icon down in this corner. If you're not already on YouTube, you should be able to click that link and it should take you directly to the YouTube page. And then you can look at the description and follow the links to any one of the three articles that we've talked about in this video. In this article in particular, I'm not going to read you all of the details, but I am going to read you the different quotes from the different um, uh, uh, supposedly, uh, well, the different traders. So these are supposedly the top crypto traders, um, but it's hard to say too because while these guys may, be, may have a, a interest or, or reputation for being a top trader, when they go by names of Satoshi Flipper, you don't really know who they are and how much they truly have invested in cryptocurrency. So I'm not familiar with these guys, uh, but Cointelegraph seems to be, so let's get into it. I'm still betting on breaking through the upper trend line resistance and price action heading north. No way are my convictions changed because some clowns sold their BTC and price tanked one day. And isn't that true? Because you, you can have people selling and tanking the price in one day and then within a few days later not only does it recover back to the original price but it can exceed it look what happened the last time we had seven consecutive green weekly candles we had a doji a, can a doji candle followed by a hundred and sixty percent increase by the looks of it we're in for a ride so this, this particular uh, trader is referencing an event that happened in 2019. And you can see to this buildup, there were seven green candles and then a quick red candle. And then after that, the price quickly skyrocketed up to uh, $14,000, $14, causing a 160% increase in the price. And right now we're seeing a similar pattern with seven green candles, the quick red one, and then another green candle. And so that has a bearish indicator that we could see the price continuing to go up. Time will tell. When it comes to trustworthiness, Bitcoin, oh, and this is from a billionaire hedge fund manager, Paul Tudor Jones. And he said, when it comes to trustworthiness, Bitcoin is 11 years old. There is very little trust in it. We are watching the birth of a store of value. Whether that succeeds or not, only time will tell. What I do know is that every day the, that goes by and Bitcoin survives, the trust in it will go up. And so while he doesn't see that the past 11 years give it a significant amount of trust, in my mind it does. Because on a daily basis, there are billions of dollars getting traded back and forth in Bitcoin. And with billions of dollars on a daily basis getting moved back and forth, uh, in my mind, that shows a high degree of trust when it's been done accurately, correctly, and it's being done at a very, very low price. And so uh, my perception of it is a little bit different than Paul's, but Paul definitely has a much better track record than I do when it comes to investing because he is a billionaire and I'm not. So uh, there's a difference of opinions there, but you know he has a better track record than I do. If the fractals continue to hold, time to start thinking about consolidation levels. 50% consolidation in real terms will put Bitcoin in the $6,000 range. All good for going forward. So this person, and I guess it's Dave the Wave, thinks that uh, Bitcoin is going to drop in price down into the $6,000 price range, but then he believes that that will be good for the future. So he's still bullish long term, but short term, he thinks that there's going to be a pretty significant correction. Uh, the next guy, that was the highest hourly volume candle since the Epic Crypto Doom Fest of March 12th. I won't be rushing into a position until this shakes out a bit. That was some real deal selling we just witnessed. And so on March 12th, when we saw that huge drop, he thought that that was some real deal selling. I think that's an interesting phrase. 
So hedge fund, and uh, this was by Barry Silbert, CEO of Grayscale. Grayscale is a large uh, uh, firm, and they they have a uh, uh, hedge fund with a, a, a exchange traded fund that you can buy and sell if you have a regular stock market account, say with uh, uh, Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade or one of the others, you can purchase the Grayscale Fund right through your stock market account. And the Grayscale Fund, the BTC Grayscale Fund purchases Bitcoin and the price tracks reasonably close to Bitcoin's price. So it's a way to enjoy the gains and, and suffer the losses of Bitcoin through your regular stock market account. So hedge fund investment gains steam 88% of inflows this quarter came from institutional investors. And so Grayscale saw a huge, they saw that one of their best quarters of people buying their uh, exchange traded fund on the stock market, but 88% of that money came from institutional investors, not retail. The overwhelming majority of which were hedge funds. The mandate and strategic focus of these funds is broadly mixed and includes multi-strat, global macro, arbitrage, long-short equity, event-driven, and crypto-focused funds. And so the funds that we're investing in Grayscale's fund uh, are, are coming from lots of different angles, lots of different perspectives, so it's quite interesting. So this will be the most brutal halving in history. Production cost is about to double to 14,000, 70% 70 above the current price. The last halving price was just 10% below production cost and price and HR collapsed 20%. Without FOMO now, expect a bigger minor capitulation, 30% or better. And so what this guy's really talking about is um, the production cost of a miner in terms of the amount that they're spending on electricity in order to generate a Bitcoin is actually going to go 70% above the current price as of the happening, which having, which just happened yesterday. And so any of the miners are now spending a lot more money in order to maintain their rigs. And many of them will probably shut off. He's estimating that about 30% or more are actually going to shut off their minor rigs, which will have a, uh, it can have a fairly significant impact on the entire crypto, you know, the entire Bitcoin industry. So time will tell. We will see. Um, but the 70% above current price is something easily uh, figured out. It really just depends on uh, what happens with the price. Does the price go up so that the miners are still profitable? Or does it tank like some of the other guys are expecting it to tank? Um, so we'll know in the near future. Because if it does tank, this might get actually even worse in terms of the number of miners that start shutting off their machines. So that is the news today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, any, anything that you want to input? I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comment section below. Be sure to leave them on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And do me a favor, have a fantastic day.